We've previously discussed the perilous nature of the Hells Angels, and in the realm of criminal groups, law enforcement consistently employs undercover tactics. The Hells Angels were no different. However, the discoveries made during these undercover operations proved to be more peculiar than anticipated. Today's video will delve into the covert dealings within the Hells Angels and the surprising revelations that emerged. Let's begin. A covert operative who infiltrated the infamous Hells Angels Motorcycle Club revealed the strict sexual protocols within the group. Jay Dobins, now 62, worked for the ATF, Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, during a two-year investigation into the Hells Angels. His mission aimed to unveil the gang's illegal activities and operations. From 2001 to 2003, he assumed the alias Jay Davis or Jay Bird, posing as a gun supplier and debt collector. He integrated into the Mesa, Arizona chapter of the organization. Once he gained entry, he swiftly grasped the strict guidelines enforced among members concerning sexual encounters with women. Violating these rules posed severe risks, often resulting in violent repercussions. During a video interview with Insider, he unveiled the hierarchical structure within the gang regarding women. He mentioned that certain older women were either wives or girlfriends of members, strictly off-limits for interaction. Engaging with a member's partner resulted in severe consequences, emphasizing the dire repercussions for attempting any such indiscretion in the imperative to avoid detection at all costs. Dobins did, however, explain that the bikers were allowed to sleep around with different women, and that it wasn't a problem. When members slept with the same woman more than once, he continued by saying that women also move from member to member. The Hells Angels Motorcycle Club originated in Fontana, California, in 1948. Over time, they've evolved into one of the globe's most notorious motorcycle clubs, expanding to encompass over 100 chapters across more than 29 countries. Dobin's infiltration into the Hells Angels was a component of Operation Black Biscuit, an investigation launched following a violent confrontation between the Hells Angels and their primary adversaries, the Mongols Motorcycle Club. The gang gained notoriety due to its association with perilous criminal activities, and Dobin's involvement in infiltrating the Hells Angels was a crucial aspect of that inquiry. Throughout the investigation, it was uncovered that he had orchestrated the simulation of a rival gang member's murder, using materials from a butcher shop to craft a gruesome crime scene. Additionally, he staged counterfeit drug transactions. Dobin revealed that during his time embedded in the inner circle of the Hells Angels, he learned about stricter protocols governing member interactions, with severe consequences for breaches. One such rule dictated that when meeting a Hells Angel while wearing sunglasses, it was imperative to raise them and make direct eye contact. Furthermore, he was advised that if he had riding gloves on, it was preferable to remove them before shaking hands with a Hells Angel. An additional rule, as discussed in our prior video, emphasized the strict prohibition against touching a Hells Angel's patch and never slapping them on the back under any circumstances. Dobin, however, inadvertently committed these infractions and faced consequences as a result of these mistakes. On occasion, he was even spanked for them. The former agent further revealed that individuals leaving the Hells Angels on sour terms faced the risk of having all belongings associated with the gang confiscated including the removal of any gang-related tattoos. He also highlighted that departing members might have their cut, vest, and motorcycle reclaimed by the organization, as they considered these possessions as their property. Interestingly, Dobins remarked on the misconception surrounding Hell's Angels, noting that while the group holds a notorious reputation for criminal activities, many members aren't extensively involved in illegal deeds. He highlighted that certain branches within the gang conduct relatively legitimate business operations. Contrary to the belief that every member was involved in drug use, he emphasized that some were dedicated to fitness and healthy lifestyles, debunking the myth that all members were addicts. These healthier habits, including good nutrition, ample rest, and abstaining from alcohol and smoking, contributed to their well-being. The United States Department of Justice confirmed that the undercover investigation uncovered substantial evidence linking the Hells Angels to numerous illegal activities. These included but were not limited to instances of murder, the manufacturing and distribution of methamphetamine, trafficking in cocaine, heroin, and marijuana, as well as the illegal trade of firearms. Operation Black Biscuit resulted in the indictment of 55 members associated with the Hells Angels and its affiliates. Among those indicted were 16 high-ranking members charged with offenses such as murder, murder for hire, racketeering, and drug trafficking. Following plea bargains, 
half of the defendants had their charges dropped or reduced, and five had their cases completely dismissed. After the arrests, it became known among the members that Dobbins had been cooperating with the government. Subsequently, he and his family faced threats of violence. The threats against him and his family started piling up, and the Hells Angels had murder contracts on him. The destruction of his family's home by fire in 2008 made the threats against them undeniably real and terrifying. Although they were asleep inside the house at the time, miraculously, his wife and children emerged unharmed and managed to escape. Dobbins has expressed deep regret, feeling that he betrayed his family by prioritizing the undercover investigation over their safety. Despite this, following his retirement, he has continued to speak publicly about the operation. Apparently, he is not the only one who tried to investigate the Hells Angels. Another even more interesting investigation was done as a result of Joshua O'Brien. The aftermath of Joshua O'Brien's involvement took a grim turn. On July 12th, after being suffocated and beaten, O'Brien regained consciousness inside the Cool Cat's tattoo parlor in Englewood. He found himself bound at the hands and ankles, bleeding, surrounded by members of the Hells Angels Motorcycle Club. Dusty Ulrich, the shop owner, began removing O'Brien's death head tattoo, the emblem of his club membership. Instead, Ulrich inscribed the word, bad, onto O'Brien's skin, while other Hells Angels took pictures using their phones. Amidst this, Ulrich threatened O'Brien, warning that any disclosure would result in fatal consequences. Despite Ulrich's threats, O'Brien bravely reported the incident to the police, sparking a five-month investigation into the notorious bikers. This inquiry culminated in investigators conducting a raid on the Hells Angels clubhouse located in Denver's Highland District. Officials confiscated methamphetamine, cocaine, cash, and dozens of firearms during the early morning raids there and elsewhere. Thirteen Hells Angels members, ranging from 30 to 81 years old, faced charges related to violating Colorado's organized crime laws, along with accusations of assault, burglary, and kidnapping. Additionally, a 14th member associated with the Destroyer Motorcycle Gang was also charged. Due to withheld arrest affidavits, the allegations against these individuals remained concealed for several months. However, the case against the Hells Angels started to unravel when prosecutors presented evidence in Denver County Court during preliminary hearings for three defendants. The arrest affidavits were disclosed after a Denver Post reporter requested the documents to be unsealed. According to these documents, the entirety of the case revolved around Joshua O'Brien, a former member who claimed he was assaulted by individuals he once considered his brothers. This occurred due to their suspicion that he was cooperating with law enforcement during an earlier search at his Lakewood motorcycle store. O'Brien disclosed to investigators that the Hells Angels Denver chapter was involved in various criminal activities nationwide, including managing methamphetamine stash houses, engaging in prostitution, firearms trafficking, and money laundering. The defense attorneys representing the Hells Angels countered these claims by stating that the prosecution's case relied solely on O'Brien's testimony. They highlighted O'Brien's warrants in multiple counties for charges such as drug possession, car theft, and failing to appear in court, raising doubts about his credibility. During the hearing, Brian Russo, the lawyer representing Hells Angels President Jason Sellers, suggested that Joshua O'Brien, given his precarious legal situation and troubles with certain individuals he sought assistance from, had a clear motive to fabricate his story. Russo implied that O'Brien, overwhelmed by his circumstances, seized the first opportunity to create this narrative. O'Brien had informed detectives that prior to the events that led to conflict, he had dedicated his life to the Hells Angels, even sacrificing his marriage and a prosperous career. However, everything shifted when Lakewood police conducted a raid on his motorcycle store, resulting in O'Brien's arrest on weapons charges. This marked a turning point in O'Brien's relationship with the organization. It appears that Joshua O'Brien faced a series of harrowing events involving the Hells Angels due to his alleged interactions with law enforcement. According to the arrest complaint, O'Brien believed that others within the Hells Angels became fearful of him because of his own apprehension. On June 28, 2019, O'Brien reported to authorities that he had been attacked by a group of Hells Angels at a secretive stash house. He claimed to have suffered assault, gunshot wounds, and stabbing before managing to escape. Following this, in July, O'Brien recounted being assaulted in a garage and forcibly taken to an Englewood tattoo parlor. There, his Hells Angels-related tattoos were concealed, which is a customary practice within the organization when they intend to sever ties with someone. As per the details in the arrest document, 
O'Brien alleged that he was abandoned, wounded, in a Denver alley while the Hells Angels purportedly absconded with thousands of dollars worth of tools, motorcycles, and cash during these encounters. Joshua O'Brien, from the Jefferson County Jail a week after the July incident, engaged in several interviews with investigators, sharing insights into the Hells Angels' structure and their extensive illegal activities. He claimed possession of four pounds of methamphetamine sourced from a cartel in his Lakewood shop before the raid, intended for distribution among Hells Angels' chapters in various states. O'Brien purportedly had knowledge of stash house locations in Minnesota and Arizona, also alleging that the club had informants within law enforcement in the Denver metro area. These informants supposedly provided the gang with information concerning ongoing investigations and impending raids by authorities. According to O'Brien's testimony in the arrest complaint, the gang engages in motorcycle theft for parts and conducts a significant volume of arms transactions. However, it remains unclear whether law enforcement was actively targeting stash houses or chapters located in other states based on the information provided by O'Brien. The two sides of this story paint a complex picture. On one hand, the defense attorneys for the Hells Angels in Denver are actively challenging Joshua O'Brien's credibility, pointing out inconsistencies in his narrative and highlighting omitted details during his interactions with detectives. They're raising valid concerns about the reliability of evidence sourced from someone with potential credibility issues. However, there's also a history cited where the Hells Angels faced mistreatment from law enforcement. The incident in 2003, where 18 members were detained without evidence of illegal activities, resulting in a lawsuit settlement and a formal apology from the city, suggests a pattern of police overreach or misconduct. The case seems to involve a clash between the Hells Angels and law enforcement, with both sides presenting their narratives. It's a situation where the credibility of witnesses and the history of interactions between the group and the authorities come into question. This story reflects the complexity of legal proceedings involving organized groups and law enforcement and highlights the challenges in ascertaining the truth amidst conflicting accounts. It's essential to consider all available evidence and context before drawing conclusions in such cases, 